Welcome to Firearms Friday. I'm Evan Green. I'm the firearms historian for the Wyoming State Museum here in Cheyenne. But today uh, we're at the Cheyenne Frontier Days Old West Museum and we're going to talk about some of their firearms. And my host today is Mike Castle. He's the curator of collections for the Old West Museum. He's an adjunct professor of history at Larimer County Community College and the author, co-author of several books about Cheyenne and Wyoming history. So, Mike, I just want to thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to look at some different guns, more guns, different guns than what we have at the State Museum. So I'm, I appreciate that. My pleasure. Glad to be back. So we have, uh, we have four commemorative Winchesters that we'll talk about shortly. But before we do, Mike, uh, as our host, Tell us about the Old West Museum. The Old West Museum is kind of a newcomer here in town, uh, actually in the entire region. Our museum didn't get started until 1978. And the reason that it was created in the first place, the building that we're currently in, used to be what they called the Old Night Show Pavilion uh, hmm. for Cheyenne Frontier Days. Mm -hmm. From 1957 up until that point, they had used it, they used this building for a dance hall, for music concerts, mm -hmm. uh, boxing tournaments, but also great venues. It kind of served as Cheyenne's first civic center. Mm -hmm. And so they had many politicians that came to talk to the people here. But as time went on, they realized that the mu that this building was not exactly placed right uh, on the grounds for Frontier But it was, right, it was here. It was here. Right here. Right. And the so they intended, they intended to uh, actually uh, orient all of Cheyenne Frontier Day's operations in this direction, but they found that they liked the way it was. Mm. So unfortunately, it was kind of in the back area. And uh, Cheyenne Frontier Days had moved their headquarters into the building uh, just just prior to 1978 uh, from an old building that was left over from World War II. It was getting old, needed to be torn mm -hmm. down. So they moved into this structure and they realized when they built another very large exhibition hall on the other side of the park, this became kind of superfluous. So what are you going to do with a big building this size? <coughs> well, very fortunately, a group of women that had been working with the parades, known as the Cheyenne Frontier Days Wheels, all volunteer women who had run the parades, had managed the carriages, had put costumes on people, had always wanted to have some type of a museum where they could show off all of the parade vehicles uh, that we had. Mm -hmm. And so they thought this would be a perfect opportunity to create a little taste of the West, if you will. So people would have an opportunity to come here and see the old West that Cheyenne Frontier Days was based on. But of course, the main thrust was to show off all of these big, beautiful carriages when they weren't on parade. Mm -hmm. So they opened in 1978. Everything that they had was donated to them, either by Cheyenne Frontier Days. But then a lot of people started throwing a lot of other things that were related to Cheyenne history and other places at the Old West Museum because of, the, because of its title. And they thought it was a great concept. And from 1978, this volunteer-driven organization was able to create a really wonderful collection of firearms that you see mm -hmm. here, the carriages that we have. They saved quite a few items from early Cheyenne Frontier Days history. And then in 1981, they actually started a major art show, one of the finest on the front Rocky Mountain Front Range that also happened as part of the venues for Cheyenne Frontier Days. Mm -hmm. Now, the museum continued to grow and expand far more than what they originally intended, and finally, in 1992, they added another expansion to the building, which we're sitting in right now, uh, to house other facilities that were needed, such as a conference room. Uh, they were anticipating to need a gift shop. They also wanted more space to show off more carriages, so it's designed to look like a giant carriage house. Right. Uh, but since that time, for the last, uh, well, four plus decades that we've been in, the museum has been able to move away from its original mission, which was to preserve all things of the American West from Cheyenne, Wyoming, the American West in general. So we could have collected anything from totem poles to Navajo pottery. Mm -hmm. We realized what really was going to make us special was the fact that we were on the grounds for such a special event. Right. And so beginning in around 2003, they started modifying their mission to focus more and more 
on an event that really needs to be talked about more, which of course is Cheyenne Frontier Days. The nice part is, is that we still get to reach back into our Old West past and talk about the history of Cheyenne, and we also get to talk about other things that people donated to us that they recall and remember about the American West, and we still get to use them from time to time. And it's one of the reasons I'm so glad you're here, because the firearms in our collection are something that we really enjoy, but the public doesn't get a very much of an opportunity to see that. Well, they'll get a chance to see them. I'm very uh, happy about that. <clears throat> you have an amazing collection of, of uh, Native American artifacts on display. Some we do. Amazing beadwork. Yeah, we were very fortunate. Most of the items that we have in our collection were given to us by people that were involved with the Indians Committee for Cheyenne Frontier Days mm -hmm. or were purchased by Cheyenne Frontier Days and then donated to the museum. That's something we didn't mention <coughs> when we were talking in detail about uh, what happens at uh, Cheyenne Frontier Days, but one of my favorite places is the Indian Village. Definitely one yeah. of everybody's favorites. Yeah. It's one of the quiet, reposeful places on the park, but it's a great place for interaction between uh, indigenous cultures and the people that come from all over the world. Yep. They don't get a chance to see this, but it's really fantastic because Cheyenne Frontier Days, when it started working with Native Americans, it was in the time period where the federal government was trying to tamp down or eliminate all Native cultures. <laughs> But as Buffalo Bill learned, that this is something that people wanted to see, and Native Americans realized this as well, that this is an opportunity to save and preserve their culture and share it even with their own generation, with their upcoming generations, and still get a chance to perform it in the traditional ways, which is exactly what Buffalo Bill and the people of Cheyenne Frontier Days wanted and still want to do even today. Yeah, I think it's pretty neat that I can look out this window and see the main Cheyenne Frontier grounds. Right, we are right in the middle of everything. Yeah, in the middle of everything. Mm -hmm. So let's take a minute and talk about some of these commemorative uh, Winchesters. Actually, the first ever commemorative Winchester was issued to celebrate the 75th anniversary of Wyoming statehood. And this, this is one of those first, uh, absolute first commemoratives that uh, Winchester went on to make over 150 different commemoratives. And there was a couple ways this could happen. If you had an organization and you wanted commemorative firearms uh, for your organization, uh, you could contact Winchester and agree to purchase a certain number and they would make a special run like this uh, commemorative for the 71st anniversary. 75th anniversary of Wyoming statehood and usually even if it was for a special group Winchester would then make another run an additional run of identical firearms and offer them for sale to the public so we actually have two of these in our collection at the at the downtown museum the state museum but um, they're kind of interesting concept in the sense that a lot of people may have purchased these as an investment and in reality they are often not as valuable in the secondary market as a similar firearm without the embellishments. And uh, consequently sometimes if you just want a gun to shoot you can find one of these that's maybe 10%, 15% cheaper than if you were buying uh, a Winchester 3030 off the rack. Um, the, the, they maintain their value if you have the original box, all the paperwork, all the accessories, and they're unfired, they're untouched, which, which this one is. So let's look at a couple others. Can I have you set that one Absolutely. over there, Mike? Um, this is a commemorative uh, for Texas and uh, it's got this nice medallion and often you see in these commemoratives that the woodwork and the general machining and finish is better than you would get on an off-the-rack firearm. This is actually labeled a model 1894 and it is uh, 1836 to 1986 Texas commemorative. It's a saddle ring carbine as was the last one and they got smart by the time they got to this point because the ring on that one will bang against the receiver. So we, ha we wrap it up <coughs> when we have it in storage so that it doesn't damage the receiver. But one from Texas. And we've talked a lot about Buffalo Bill, 
This is a Buffalo Bill commemorative. Again, it's a Winchester Model 94. It's got uh, Cody's signature here, William Cody, Chief of Scouts. And this one is kind of neat because it has an octagon barrel, kind of a nickel silver uh, four end cap on it and nickel silver butt plate. And the carbine ring here is uh, nickel silver. So that's the Buffalo Bill one. We got one more. This one is an Annie Oakley commemorative, and it is, uh, I think this is some kind of a Caracote finish. It is not gold-plated, um, but it has that finish on the uh, lever, on the action, on the front barrel band, and on the barrel band. And this is a 22 caliber rifle, because, uh, I suppose, because Annie Oakley used a 22 rifle in much of her shooting exhibitions, but you know, look at the look at the quality of the wood in that walnut stock. It's just beautiful. So, Winchester commemoratives. If you have any questions about commemoratives or about the Old West Museum here in Cheyenne, put them in the comments and we'll get back to you. Of course, you can always call the Wyoming State Museum, leave a message for me and I'll get back to you. I enjoy talking to people who have watched these videos and have questions about guns or Wyoming history or about anything else. So, again, Mike, thanks for having us. I'm glad you're here. Nice and to have you. <laughs> thanks. And thanks for watching, folks. <laughs>